What is up players? It's Woolboss Tay up in this mode. Today we're going to be looking at the Imperial Man-Eater for the Ogre Kingdoms. It comes in one of these white boxes. And um, this is what it looks like in the, in the plastic uh, box. So let's take it out and see what pieces there are. And review it. You've got the body here. This is a fine cast, so let's see what there is to see. You got a lot of flash. Um, I don't really see any air bubbles, which is nice. Got a little imperial shield there. Uh, some more flash, but that could be clipped off, taken away. Surprisingly, no air bubbles. I see a lot of tiny ones over here on the inside of his boot, but those don't even look like they'll need liquid green stuff to cover once they're primed and uh, once you get the first layer of paint on there, those should disappear. So very good. Let's look at the head. Bleh. Bleh. It reminds me of Slimer from Ghostbusters. The live action Slimer. Bleh. Uh, see a bunch of little air bubbles in the feathers, but considering the what the sculpt is and the detail, that is that is not, it's not really gonna bother me. There's a, I see a mold line up the right side of this feather. So that is more of a problem than the air bubbles because that I don't know how I'm gonna clean. Usually when you get a mold line on a model, it's on a flat surface or, or a nearly flat surface. So you could just take the back end of your hobby knife and kind of scrape it back and forth until it goes away. In this case, there, there's like no way you can get really in there without ripping off a lot of the, the detail. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might be able to scrape sideways, but there's so many different uh, levels and heights for the different areas of this feather. So I don't know, <clears throat> that, that might be a problem. Now let's take a look at the giant two-handed weapon. It's taken off a statue, here you can see the ogre's arms and the, the hand of the statue that was originally clutching this hammer. I think that's a pretty cool artistic touch that he ripped this off of a statue. I don't see any air bubbles here either. Oh, there's one. That might need some liquid green stuff, because that is pretty obvious. Pac-Man. Um, hmm. Bunch of skulls, poorly casted and translated into fine cast. Oh. <laughs> fine cast! Look at that mold line, that is... Ooh, ooh, that makes me mad. And there's a, you can really see it on the top of the, the hammer as well. But oh, fine cast, fine cast. Ah uh, well. All right, I'm gonna clip these all out, clean them up, and then glue the baby together. And then we'll show you what it looks like once it's all glued. Ooh, this piece was fantastic. Look at the um air bubble right there I hadn't seen earlier crazy mold line right over here I hadn't seen earlier air bubble air bubble air bubble the air bubble there and in the body I missed a, a really big mold line that was coming up here up the leg that one wasn't so bad but um, yeah the weapon was just utterly horrible. It was so horrible. 
putting t uh, taken out. And um, I forgot to mention that you only get these three pieces, the body, the head, and the um, one weapon choice. So there's not much, there's not much extra, like when you get the, the fine cast slaughter master or the tyrant, you get an extra option for a head or an extra option for a weapon, uh, either, you know, a hand weapon or a, or a two-handed weapon. But this one, you just really get whatever you see on the, on the website. Um, saying the website because there's no picture on the box. So, all right, I'm gonna go and continue building the sucker and uh, we'll see you in just a minute. <coughs> and here we have our finished Imperial Man-Eater for the Ogre Kingdom's army. And um, I'm quite happy with the way he cleaned up. There are still some air bubbles and old lines I need to fix. I didn't really go in with the liquid green stuff yet. I just wanted to get this out as soon as possible. Um, but I'm, I, you know, what is there to say about the model, really? It's, there, there's no extras, so for the extras, uh, extra bits section of the review, of course, it gets like an F. There's absolutely nothing that you can use. But for the uh, innovation, for the detail, for the quality of sculpt, I gotta give it, you know, at least a B. I give it a good, solid B grade. It's not an A because, um, it just, there's not much that really makes it stand out as Imperial to me, except for the feathers and the slashed um, shoulder sleeve bits. Like, uh, to me, or and this Imperial shield down here, but that could be, any ogre could be carrying this Imperial shield. You know, if, 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 if I were to design it, I would maybe have like this, instead of just being cuffs on the sleeve, I might have them try to do something different with the pants or with the, uh, with the slashed poofy sleeves. Um, I might give him an actual hat instead of having him just like jab those feathers into the skin of his forehead. There's a lot of different things that you could do to make it look imperial, but you know, for the amount of... What the? This guy's got a... Look at this, he's got a little baby knoblar behind his home, his, his, his feather thing. <laughs> his little baby knobbler peeking out. Right? That's a knobbler, right? I don't think I've ever seen a baby green skin goblin knobbler orc anything, but... Um... Okay, I amend my grade. This gets an A+. Plus. Baby knobbler. Awesome. So, <clears throat> if you are an Ogre Kingdoms player, I think you would have a much easier, cheaper time making a two-handed man-eater, Imperial man-eater, by just converting up a iron gut, an iron gut figure with some bits from your great swords, or you know, get go to a friend who plays Empire and ask him for some bits to to convert a man-eater, and then just paint him up using some of the color schemes that I have on my in my Empire series. You know, you don't have to go out and buy this figure, because this figure, single figure for Ogre Kingdoms, um, they, they really add up if you want a Maneater squad. Sometimes I see squads of Maneaters in like four, six. I think the largest squad of Maneaters I've seen was like 12, and they all had like the special rules like Sniper and Poison and Two-Handed Weapons and stuff. And they, uh, they were pretty expensive point-wise, but um, he, the, the guy had made them using just Iron Guts models and bits thrown in, so I think that's definitely, in the long run, gonna, gonna run you cheaper than going out and buying these figures. If you're a collector, like myself, and a hobbyist, and a painter first, then um, that's a different story. Try to get them cheap. I got this one pretty cheap, um, and uh, especially with the new price hikes that are gonna be going into effect pretty soon. It's going to be harder and harder trying to explain purchasing one of these guys for your army. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little unboxing uh, for Ogre Kingdoms, the Imperial Maneater. And uh, see you all in the next one.